The regular meeting of the Police Conduct Oversight Commission Audit Subcommittee will now begin. Good afternoon. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Police Conduct Oversight Commission Audit Subcommittee for October 25th, 2021. I'm Robert Jackson Pino. I am the chair of this subcommittee. As we begin, I'll note for the record that this meeting has remote participation by members of city staff um, as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to declared local public health emergency. This meeting will be recorded and posted to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota open meeting law. At this time, I will ask the clerk to call the roll so we can verify a quorum for this meeting. Commissioner Crockett. Here. Commissioner Sparks. I'm present. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, we yes. can. Chair Pino. Here. There are three members present. Let the record reflect. We have a quorum. Next, we'll proceed to uh, the adoption of our agenda and the acceptance of meeting minutes for September 27th, 2021. A copy of the agenda has been posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Um, will the clerk call the roll for the acceptance of both the agenda as well as the meeting minutes for September 2021? Um, I believe you need a motion. Yes. Uh, could we hear a motion? A motion to accept the minutes from last meeting. All right. Um, so moved. And do we need a second, Madam Clerk, or are we uh, no, satisfied you're, with that? No, you're the... good. Okay. You're good. Commissioner Crockett. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Chair Pino. Aye. There are three ayes. All right. Well, uh, let uh, it reflect that both the motion to adopt the agenda for today's meeting as well as the acceptance of the minutes for September 2021's meeting are accepted. Uh, next order of business is the acceptance of public comments. I will open the floor and invite comments from the community. We will limit public comment period to no more than two minutes per speaker. And with that, are there any members of the community on the line who wish to address the commission? Please remember to press star six to unmute yourself. We do have three guests on the line joining us by phone. Just want to make sure they have the opportunity to speak if they are interested in leaving public comment. Final chance. All right. Hearing no individuals who wish to leave public comment, we'll move on to our next item, uh, which is unfinished business. First of which being no knock warrants. And I do believe we have a member of city staff here um, to speak on no knock warrants. That's you, right, Chris? Yep. So I'm also joined by a colleague of mine, Ryan, who's an analyst with OPCR. Um, so we uh, set about getting the, the data that will form the basis of the project. Mm -hmm. um, we pulled the, uh, I say we, Ryan did most of this, just to put credit where credit's due. We, we pulled the data for um, the no-knock warrants comparing the uh, first quarter of 2020, uh, sorry, knock and no-knock. So we've got mm -hmm. warrants, a warrant list for the first quarter of 2020 and then comparing it with the first quarter of 2021. Again, comparing knock and no-knock. Mm -hmm. um, I can share the list. Um, some of the information is redacted because it contains uh, public uh, private information. Sure. Can you see my screen there? Yes. 
Um, so the this extends on the the warrants we were looking at before. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the 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 date, the classifications, the type of entry. Mm -hmm. um, the cost section is something that we will need to work out, and I apologize, but it seems that some of the data has been corrupted on converting this to a PDF. Mm. Um, I think it could still be made out. So the again, the basis of the warrant, the type of case it is, um, injuries, evidence recovered. Those, you know, the same categories we were looking at before. Um, the number of warrants went down significantly in 2021, um, but that is the the pool of data we're we're looking at here. Um, let me stop sharing that. Okay. So, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you want to speak to some of the the patterns that we that we noticed in the data. Um, yeah, the the way in which no knocks are done and knock warrants are done is, is there. There are some interesting aspects I think will be fleshed out when we get into writing a report. Yeah, I would I would I would echo that. Um, what we noticed um, was quite a bit of. Um, consistency in with regard to um, injuries both to officers and um, civilians um, in sort of both both scenario unannounced and announced um, injuries were were very rare almost non-existent um, which was an interesting which was an interesting find um, typically as well um, in both unannounced and announced warrants we found that um, evidence is typically recovered that is pertinent to the warrant um, one thing um, that uh, I think we we want to do is more digging into is um, taking a look at certain ones where um, we weren't able to within the time frame that we had uh, locate the search warrant um, in the data that we were looking in. Um, so we kind of want to get a, a balance uh, to that picture um, okay. as we continue looking in. But I think I think Chris covered it pretty well. Um, there was also a. Uh, we, we will flesh out the data on this, but there are also seem to be a number of warrants where the warrant is issued as a no knock warrant, mm -hmm. and then the the target of the warrant is arrested in a felony traffic stop elsewhere, mm -hmm. uh, and then the okay. warrant is then not executed as a no knock. So I think that's that's an important or interesting part of the data is that you know we look we saw the original pool was there were quite a few no knock warrants, um, drilling down into the information that we that we have. Um, quite a few of them are actually executed in a in a just with keyed entry once the target has been arrested and you know they, they don't have to do the no knock yeah. that is interesting um, um and i think something that we that we will identify or have identified so far and there'll be more things we can discuss for policy wise but uh the data is in different sources um i think that that's an issue we've talked about throughout is that the, the you have to go to multiple areas to find the data we're looking for um, one of the recommendations of no-knock Minnesota was to centralize the data, have a report done for it. Um, currently, the the only like central repository is the court, where the warrants are filed with the court. We've talked about that there are issues in that data being publicly accessible in a in an easy digestible fashion. So I think that's something that we would definitely discuss down the line when it comes to any recommendations that come out of the study. Um, is having to go to many different sources to get this information. Okay. Um, thank you both for your work on this um, so far. It, it's it's interesting to see uh, at least your understanding of the the primarily differences or lack thereof rather of uh, these two groups. Um, I am curious since um, you, you know you touched on this I, the idea of uh, you know uh, no discernible difference in bodily bodily harm of uh, civilians involved in either of these. Um, and that was one of the key components of, uh, you know, the, the reasons for this research and study. Uh, I'm curious, uh, one, probably most importantly, uh, what are any significant differences in any categories that you've measured so far between knock and no knock warrants, either in terms of outcome, um, or any other, um, noticeable metric, um, but uh, also, um, could you give us just a, a, an understanding if 
only a brief one about your methodology behind this? Did you, you know, is this more of like a qualitative analysis? You looked at the two groups, you tried to find trends amongst them. Was this more of a, a quantitative, you know, creating a, a you know, um, the, I understand it as uh, ordinary least squares, like a linear regression analysis, but um, if there's some other type of uh, way to compare these two groups that you used at a quantitative level, it'd be interesting to hear that methodology as well. Um, I, I do think that some of that will, um, as, as the report is written based on the data, mm -hmm. um, some of that will be, will be fleshed out in the, in the comparisons. Um, I would guess at this mm -hmm. point, I would say, we, you know, we just we just have the underlying data. I don't know, Ryan, if you mm -hmm. had anything to add to that. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think w when going into two projects like these historically, in, uh, we try to get it at first kind of a picture of, of what are we looking at here? Yeah. Um, you know, what is the situationality of it? You know, let's let's not deep dive into something that may not exist. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, so so at this point, we were looking, um, uh, you know, if you if taking a look at the the data that Chris presented, those were effectively the um, the questions, the rubric, the methodology we were using. Uh, we were exactly. looking at a few different factors to try to get a baseline for um, things like, you know, injuries, things like is is evidence actually being recovered? Are these um, being nightcapped, uh, being done outside of, you know, sort of uh, daytime hours, those sorts of things? Uh, what are they looking for? Uh, that that uh, bit, so it was a bit more quantitative um, at this right. point. Um, I think you know as we as we dig deeper and look into um, you know different aspects, and certainly if there are um, concerns or questions you have or would like us to look into, right. you know, we can see about incorporating that. Um, we'll probably have a, a more qualitative an um, analysis uh, next time we we speak. Yeah, sure. And and yeah, sorry, I don't mean to like uh, pry here. I'm just I heard you guys like make these statements of like there isn't a big difference between, um, uh, for instance, uh, evidence recovered, right? A rate of which evidence is recovered, right? Mm -hmm. Is that because on every single one of them, it says evidence was recovered on the scene related to uh, the warrant and like there is no difference. There isn't a single one of them that says that isn't the case. Um, or it, it, is there a difference? Or like one of the items says there isn't evidence recovered. There is, there isn't. And then from there, you realize there's a certain ratio of these two groups where one has more evidence recovered from the scene or another or not. Um, trying to just get an understanding of how you guys came to the, the two statements that you uh, said at the beginning of this. Um, so. So with regard to evidence recovered, uh, what mm -hmm. we primarily looked at was um, it's called the uh, page five of a search warrant um, where they, mm -hmm. have, they list out uh, what was recovered. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, whether or not there was evidence recovered, uh, were the things noted in um, the evidence pertinent to what they were searching for? So, if, for example, if um, they were uh, searching for narcotics and firearms, were some of those items recovered? Um, you know, if uh, typically if it was something like they just recovered some cell phones, um, you know, for or something along those lines, um, we might we might put the evidence was not recovered. That was necessarily pertinent to what was listed in the warrant. Um, so uh, looking at the data, if yeah, if most of them, uh, you know, as you could see, had yes, um, a few had no. Typically when it had no, there was nothing recovered. OK. Um... And did you just like take a, a simple fraction of out of the hole here are the ones that said yes um and you know that a certain percentage of them recovered items at the scene and then you just looked at the difference of those two fractions and that's how we're coming to the understanding that there isn't uh two distinct differences between the announced and unannounced groups or is there some other use uh way that you guys determined that there wasn't a difference so uh, at this point, it's a, it's a general observation. Um, we okay. have broken okay. it down into, when I had the example, 10 cases, you know, we have the pie charts and the, the graph mm -hmm. charts for that. We have not done that yet for the whole sample. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sounds good. I'm just, yeah, trying to get an understanding of what our level of methodology is um, here. And it sounds like it's 
we're we're sticking at the level of summary data, not necessarily trying to find statistical significance between these two groups, to my understanding. Yeah, and it is it, it is my um, uh, yeah. I, I think it will be the case that now that we have the underlying data, um, mm -hmm. that as we begin to write this report, then that the analysis uh, and the, you know any charts to compare the different types would be fleshed out uh, okay. in a lot more detail. Yeah, so, yeah. That, yeah, I think I think to Chris's point to um, you know it sometimes it's hard to to see in the end product, but the the time and work it takes to get this amount of data pulled is mm -hmm. is pretty high. The the initial sort of dig takes quite a bit of time, and once we have a baseline to work from, things tend to move more quickly. Yeah, um, I know that some of these things are redacted, uh, and I want to make sure I'm sensitive to that. But I am kind of curious on and be more than willing to like play around with these. I assume that although you showed us in the form of a PDF, uh, would it be possible for you to send me uh, an Excel spreadsheet with this data in a declassified way? So that way I could play around with it myself and we could kind of collaborate on this. Uh, yeah, I do. I do not see an issue with with that. Um, mm -hmm. The I, I converted it into a PDF just because of the the ease of redacting using Adobe software. True. Um, but I, I don't see an issue with um, that we would have in taking the same data and mm -hmm. putting, you know, emailing it out to the clerk and the commissioners in an Excel format. Yeah. That'd be great because I, yeah, I'd be more than happy to throw it into like either this or, you know, R or Stator or something and just play around and see um, if I can provide a uh, certain like uh, analysis from my own free time to help you guys with uh, coming to conclusions that would be valuable as well. Yeah, that would be that would be great. And I think that, um, you know, as, especially as we as we work on the report, there'll be a lot of opportunities to connect mm -hmm. on any trends, observations, and then, you know, it's especially um, when we get into any policy recommendations that come from that. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot, a lot of areas to discuss based on that data. Great. Um, I kind of dominated question uh, time right now, um, but uh, I'd be more than happy to um, either recognize Jordan Crockett or Jordan Sparks. Um, if you have more questions about uh, the status of where we're at right now, it's exciting to see that we have two groups of uh, samples here of the NOx and no NOx. So, uh, you know, if you have questions, uh, commissioners, by all means, um, feel free to dig in. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for for putting it to together. It, it is really awesome to see the the two samples there. And uh, and Jax, you you hit a lot of the questions on the head. Um, and it's helpful to understand that you guys kind of put together this like more of a summary than um, the dis distinct like statistical uh, you know nuances or you know the the needles to find. Um, and, I, and it's probably why you know we collaborate to figure the, those pieces out. Um, but yeah, no, no questions yet, but I'll be thinking. Thank you, Commissioner Crockett. Um, Commissioner Sparks, I'll just leave the space open for you to star six and unmute yourself if you want to, but by no means are you obligated to. Um, just want to give you that time if you have any questions. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. I was talking and forgot to star six myself. So thanks for the reminder. Um, I did have a question for Mr. Band, and I, I may have missed this earlier. Um, so when you were sharing that PDF, I noticed you had a column that said cost. I was just, and it was blank, um, just because you had converted it to PDF. But I was curious, what does that column represent? What is the cost that you're speaking of? So that column currently is blank, um, but a, okay. uh, a a factor that that had been raised by the subcommittee previously was the cost involved in these warrants. Um, yeah. And we had talked about various ways in which that that data could be um, could be obtained. You know, we we would have a 
I, I assume be able to get like a baseline of, you know, the SWAT team consists of this many members, average pay is this. So we could work out the cost of a SWAT deployment versus um, just say a, a community response team for the for the no knock warrants. Um, sorry, for the for the knock warrants. Um, and then another factor that had been raised was the potential cost to property owners um, mm. when damage is done to the property. And that would, could be in, in two factors. We would, w the areas that we're going to be looking into is either um, potentially claims filed with the city for that damage, or alternatively, um, we had talked about uh, special assessments um, possibly being requested for the board up for if we're able to have a property, um, you know, if a, if a door is broken, that's often mm -hmm. often what's done. So that that's kind of what we would be looking at for for cost. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that sounds like what we what we talked about, and that sounds like it's being covered. So I'm I'm good there, and, and thank you for presenting and and showing us that data and kind of talking through it. It's pretty exciting. I share Mr. Uh, Pina's excitement. Thank you, Commissioner Sparks. Um, all right. Uh, any final words, uh, gentlemen, on no knock warrants before we move on to our next line item? Um, um, I would just say that uh, you know, timeline-wise, I think we're still still on course. We'll get the um, we'll get the data over to the the commissioners to have a have a look at, um, and we will start to to piece things together. Um, you know, share any drafts before. Um, before anything, you know, becomes formalized and, and make sure that we're covering all the areas that, that the subcommittee wants to cover. Great. Thank you so much. Um, next item of unfinished business is a uh, continued discussion on uh, coaching. Um, and last meeting, um, we, uh, we were w unable to get uh, a report from staff regarding the current status of coaching. So we, we sent in a, uh, a request for a report um, or at least an update on the current status, understanding the uh, extent to which we're able to continue with this item. item. Um, and I, I do believe, uh, Chris, you you have an update for us. Is that correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Um, so the, the the basic position is that um, the lawsuit is still ongoing, so mm -hmm. no new information about coaching can be given at this time. Um, that said, we have been looking into the um, the portals that exist for coaching. Yeah. Um, the The case management system that we use is is fairly old, um, so converting that data over is quite a manual process. Um, mm -hmm. And we are looking at hopefully getting into a into a new case management system that would make all this a lot a lot easier. But currently, um, everything is is manual. Therefore, you know. To produce some of the new information, it is creating a new, a new piece of work on on coaching. Um, but uh, myself, uh, Ryan, and Andrew have been have been working on um, making some of the portals correctly reflect the data, updating them. Um, so hopefully that when that when whatever is happening with the the lawsuit is is finalized, that the new information can be published very quickly. Okay, great. Um, just so that way. Because the way the way you phrase that could be one of two two ways. I want to make sure I'm clear on it. Um, I know we were working on updating a dashboard. To my understanding, that is separate enough from any ongoing litigation that we were able to update it, or at least we're on a track, a timeline to be able to update that without needing any sort of litigation to end. Uh, is that true, or has that changed? Um, so my my understanding um, was that there was a few different aspects of that. So there is the older mm -hmm. data, some of mm -hmm. which needs to be um, just needs to be corrected. Then sure. there is some of the um, some of the new newer data actually needs to be processed, mm -hmm. um, so taken out of the system and put into a new one, and that would be creating something new for coaching. I mm -hmm. believe the timeline for that is like 2018, 2019 onwards. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, my my understanding was the 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 new data being put into a portal is something that we couldn't do because of the litigation. Yes, that is my understanding. Okay, that is that is new information for me. Uh, I'm kind of disappointing, but uh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, ooh, on the point of correcting um, information from up to 2017. 
Um, I was taking a look at the OPCR um, dashboard uh, prior to this meeting. For those of you who are watching along with us, this is the uh, dashboard entitled Office of Police Conduct Review Data Dashboard, um, which is within Minneapolis MN.gov. I am going to put a link in the chat for anybody who is following along with us to view. In case you haven't already seen it, we have shared it multiple times this year. Um, and I think one of the items at the crux of what we're talking about with this coaching um, conversation is centered around the idea of um, discipline. Uh, the discipline matrix, the 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 you know, uh, one having an understanding of where and what the most current version of that discipline matrix is was a topic of discussion uh, that the PCOC has had multiple times. Um, I have I, maybe I have had this. I just don't remember it. I, I would love to have the most recent and current uh, uh, discipline matrix um, so that way we know what the quote unquote, the ideal uh, category definitions are, right? Um, and based off of what that matrix describes, it would be really cool in this data dashboard to be able to see how often a particular item, let's say, you know, uh, some of the, some of the small stuff like you know swearing at uh, a um, at an individual you know no bodily harm but someone was offended because a police officer swore right um, where that is on the discipline matrix and uh, how often that sort of infraction or uh, accused infraction complaint uh, is categorized at that point in the discipline matrix and see where it falls above or below because i think we have this initial hypothesis here in this group that uh nothing is ever perfect and what is described in the policy may differ from what the practice is going on in um in mpd's uh disciplinary process um and it'd be interesting to see that difference or be able to see whether or not that difference is occurring. And I think the best way to do that is by understanding the discipline matrix as the standard, quote unquote. Um, and then if it is possible for each of these categories to see whether or not the the complaints are. If the complaints and the responses to those complaints uh, correlate well with their categories on the discipline matrix. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've I've made a made a note of that. Um, I, I I would have to to ask Andrew about the the most updated discipline matrix. My understanding is that the 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 range, which I realize is not quite the same, um, is next to the policy in the policy. I remember that policy. Yep. Um, and sometimes it's it's a very wide range, you know, in the the letter categories A through D, and that seems to not be a range. It just means not ranged. Um, and and that is interesting in its own right um, to see how broad a range could be for a particular infraction, which might be something we talk about as we go down this. But I don't want to put the cart before the horse too much. Um, but yeah, it it would be interesting to to. Uh, Kind of just dig in deeper to, I think, the standard first, if that's possible to do, because it seems like it should be. It hasn't changed. Um, it's not something that's up for debate. It is something that is finalized. So understanding the facts of something doesn't seem like it would be impeding in litigation. I'm not a lawyer. That's just my perspective. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's in my mind, it's worth asking. Um, and I think maybe yeah. that's the first baby step that we start off with. Yeah, I can definitely touch base with Andrew about the um, the p potentially, you know, finding the most current discipline matrix and mm -hmm. um, yeah. that that data breakdown, as you say. Yeah, and and frankly, I mean, since we can't look at 
data in the dashboard beyond 2017, I'd be okay if we even just had a dashboard that was relative to the data that we have. So that way we could even just say, hey, this was the standard at in 2017, um, and this is the practice of you know via the data that we had in 2017. And here's how closely they relate to each other. Or here's how closely they don't relate to each other. Um, it might be a bit of you know practice for us because it's still four year old data, but it's better than nothing, and will get us a. a at least a step further in trying to understand this um, whole issue a little bit better. Okay, yeah, I will. I will relay that for yeah. you. Yeah, that's that's my brainstorming that I that I have on this and that I've had for the past like since our last meeting. Uh, Jordan Crockett or Jordan Sparks, uh, do either of you have uh, thoughts on either what I said or if you've been thinking about this in the past? I know we've kind of hit a a wall with this and I want to you know brainstorm for a minute to try to see how we can move forward in a productive way on this item. I, I think hopefully you can hear me. This is uh, yes. Mark, so I, I, I think it's useful to have the historical data and I kind of thought about it some too since the last time we met. And I think you know you, you and I landed on the, the same page. Um, mm -hmm. And and part of it is just because that's what we can do right now, but that's certainly not uh, that's good solid effort. That's not wasted effort. Um, we can we'll, we'll, once it's all said and done and the lawsuit's cleared up and we can look at more recent data. That's good, but you know this kind of sets us up for success. Looking at the past data and it's just more data points, right? Over five, six, seven years instead of concentrating on two or three, we can um, maybe there are things that have changed. Maybe there are trends that we'll notice. That kind of thing. Yeah. That's fair, and it would be interesting to be able to compare these over time to say, you know, let's say hypothetically we do see that there's a difference between what's in the discipline matrix and then what's being applied in practice, um, and see how the magnitude of that difference has changed over time or hasn't. Uh, are we stiffer than the policy? Are we more lax than the policy? Um, or are we right on? Um, and in what categories, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think this might be interesting a little bit more long term than what we were expecting, but uh, doesn't mean we're wasting our time. Uh, Commissioner Crockett, any any thoughts, any opinions, questions, anything like that? All right. Um, any final words, uh, Chris, on this topic? Because um, I think that that we'll, we're going to take a baby steps on this one because of the litigation, but. Um, do you have any anything to add or things that we should know of um, before we conclude this item? Uh, nothing at this time, but I will okay. I will uh, get in contact with um, the higher ups about those questions that you raised. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I will say um, now that we've concluded uh, this item of unfinished business, uh, just a note for those watching along and for this committee. Uh, we were asked by our newly uh, elected uh, chair of the PCOC, Abigail Sarah, to have a follow-up uh, regarding um, the, uh, the uh, civil rights and uh, hate crime reporting of uh, people in the transgender community. Uh, this was an item that uh, we first was brought to our attention uh, almost two years ago uh, now. And uh, we've uh, been slowly working through that process as well. Um, but we haven't had an update in um, a little while. I will say to this uh, subcommittee, so that way you are aware, I have reached out to the staff uh, member who is responsible uh, for that research and study. Um, and I have communicated with our clerk here to make sure that that report is going to be coming out, um, or at least an update on that report is going to be coming out as soon as possible. Uh, unfortunately, the staff member involved uh, is not available uh, for this week, but uh, ideally by the next subcommittee meeting, we'll get an update there. Um, just so that way everybody's aware, uh, hopefully we can anticipate that update uh, next meeting. And uh, with uh, all items on our agenda concluded for this meeting, 
And seeing no further business before us, without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.